Radio Free Tatooine presents Galactic War Report, a Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes podcast. Boshuda, fellow Hollow Table hustlers, you're tuned into Galactic War Report, a Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes podcast that's better than some and worse than others. I'm Sean, a.k.a. The Other Sean, and sitting across the hollow table from me is Josh, a.k.a. The Golden Pop-Tart. So I'm looking forward to this episode. I mean, we have, let's just say a little bit, tiny bit, like a morsel of news like this week. It's so, so small, yeah. Right? And, and We're going to milk it. We're going to talk about that auto button for know, like right? the hour. whole time. All of our episodes lately have been like an hour 20, uh, something like this one's not. Yeah, I, I think if you're looking for that that episode that's gonna be like, oh, this is this is good, but you know, it's just about us talking, you know, in general, this yeah. is perfect for you, right? I don't you know. know. We'll see. Maybe, maybe we get carried away and we just chat. Yeah, we'll All see how time. it goes. But but no, I mean it, it's one of those weeks where there's no responsibility. It's all just about talking about what's going on in life. It's a for funsies episode, right? We're doing this episode because we do an episode every week. <laughs> Not because there's news, <laughs> but no, I mean, there is actually, so there's no, uh, or very little official news, but there's a yeah. lot going on in the game right now. There's a lot of uh, people feeling certain kinds of ways about conquest. Uh, this is our first run through this conquest. So we've obviously got a lot to talk about there too. Um, as we're, we're, we're wrapping up by the time this releases, there's only a couple days left. So, yeah. Uh, and, and as we record, this is the first day of the new three V three grand arena with new data mm-hmm. grounds. So we got that to kind of poke oh, around yeah. with too. Oh, we got a, we got a lot we can say. Yeah. So surprise, we've got a show <laughs> with that. Let's take a look at some blurf days. All right. Uh, not a lot of news this week, but fortunately, we, we've got blurf days, right? That'll eat up some time. How many do we have this week? One. Oh, we've got one. Yeah. <laughs> Just one. Happy blurf day to Xanadu Blood mm. on the 13th, turning six years old. Six years of wow. Xanaduing and blooding. Yes. I will I say mean, Xanadu's one of my favorite words in the English language. Yeah. I love it. Uh, that's great. Uh, I mean, I don't know truly what it's real. Like, yeah, what's its real meaning? Xanadu. I, I know it from well. So it's a it's an old disco song. Is it Abba? I think I don't know. But it's also no. I'm thinking of Waterloo. <laughs> <laughs> Waterloo. <laughs> uh, no, Xanadu is Olivia Newton John. Yeah. Ah. Uh, but uh, it's also it's the name of the estate in. Citizen Kane. Ah, I, yes. That's one of my favorite movies. So, like, it's, the, I'm pretty sure it's the first line spoken where they show the estate as he's dying and they kind of like pan outside and you see the gate and everything looks super fake, like a Hollywood set. But mm-hmm. this voiceover, this very 19, what, that was 20s? God, I feel stupid for not knowing. It's one of my favorite movies. It's, yeah, it's, that's got to be 20s. Maybe. Yeah. Um, this very 20s voiceover comes on and says, Xanadu. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, just great. I love it. So a happy blurf day, Xanadu blood. Um, now I'm Googling Citizen Kane because I've 1941, but mm. it took place earlier. That's yeah. that's what it was. Okay. Um, cool. So with that said, let's, let's not a lot of blurf days. Let's take a look at this week's upcoming in-game events brought to you by SWGOH events.com for a complete list of past, present and future events. SWGOH events.com is a universe of info in a galaxy of heroes. Now this is, this is most of our show notes right here. Yeah. Right. There's it's actually mo- a lot going on this week. So on the 13th, buckle up kid. You got an Omega battle. You got a galactic challenge. I don't actually know what I usually look that up. 
I don't know what the galactic challenge is going to be this time hmm. around. It's uh, going to be on Kashyyyk versus clone troopers and it's bonuses for Imperial troopers. Okay. All right. Trooper V trooper. I like it. On the 14th, we'll have a military might assault battle. We'll also have a daring droid mythic event. On the 14th, we've got smugglers run two, which I used to complain about all the time, but like now that I learned you just put Chewy in the mix, Ooh. it's not that bad. You do mm. seriously, you do Jabba, right? And yeah. then Kersantan, Bausch, Skiffguard Lando, and regular old Chewy. Uh. All you have to do, it doesn't really matter what you do. You get to Kersantan's first turn, do his first special, so he does his taunt, mm-hmm. press auto. You're done. That's it. Really? That does it. Almost every time that does it. And it's such a time consuming event that yes. I feel like maybe that's the takeaway for this episode because the rest of it's going to be two old men yelling at clouds. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is. Yes, it is. <laughs> so just, just stop the podcast and go play your smugglers run to and use Chewie and be, be a happy little Galaxy of Heroes player. Or if you didn't stop the podcast, here comes the dirt. <laughs> uh, no, we've got also on the 15th, Discarded Doctrine. That is your executor uh, uh, fleet mastery event. 16th brings us another Omega battle, this time on Dathomir, as well as a galactic challenge that I do not yet know. And that's the Monday that Conquest ends. So all of the accompanying business there comes around we've got uh uh proving grounds i oh no i was thinking i was gonna have to do proving grounds if i don't get ezra but no they stay for the next cycle as like a secondary yeah. thing okay yeah. never mind thank goodness I mean, uh, <laughs> you have to really not like because even if you get i think it's what fourth crate you can still oh, really? get it before proving grounds oh, yeah then so. i got no worries at all We'll have a proving grounds for those of you who do have worries. We'll also have ultimate journey popping up, of course. And then week two of Grand Arena season 57, the sign up is on the 16th. So don't forget to do that. Uh, and I hate to break it to you, but conquest is over, but your woes are not. Here comes territory <laughs> battle, rise of the empire, or if you're doing one of the earlier ones, it is a dark side territory battle. On the 17th, we've got a fleet mastery for endurance. 18th brings us another assault battle, this time Rebel Roundup. And uh, the 19th, we've got Defense of Dathomir. We're all used to that. We're back on a regular schedule with that now. since yeah. they've, they've made up for all the uh, unkillable Grievous instances of it. So this is just a regular old Defense of Dathomir. So... Pretty eventful week. I'll yeah, say. definitely. And between the time we're recording this and and the time this launches, I think we've got another assault battle coming up, right? Uh, military might. Yeah, in just a couple of days. Cool. Good. Good. Um. So that said, let's let's go over the top news stories. Um. <laughs> but first, a quick shout out to our fantastic Patreon supporters. If you enjoy what we do. And you want to be a part of our exclusive community for some reason, head over to patreon.com slash galactic war report. Your support makes this podcast possible and you get access to the VIP section of our discord server for some behind the scenes whining these days. But uh, now then <laughs> punch it, pop tart. All right. So let's talk about this auto button. Yeah. I know, What's right? This on? is this is it. I mean, tell me, set the scene. Tell me the whole story. <laughs> the whole story. <laughs> well, we, we, it's been about a week ago, right? At this point, you know, I'm in our last podcast, we broke it live, right? Yeah. But it was days later for you guys um, that it wasn't working, right? So it came yeah. out just as we were kind of doing that, and unfortunately, you could only go through and do basic. So, um. Or, my, yeah, th- there was like a little workaround, wasn't it? That you yeah, could, well, you could go through and you just turn it off. And oh, so yeah, turn the selection yep. off and it would just do a regular auto. And That's it was, 
it was overlapping each other. So basically like it really was hard to kind of get to the right spot. And so for Mm -hmm. some people, they weren't realizing why they were dying. And then all of a sudden they realized, okay, they're just doing basic through the whole thing. Mm -hmm. Myself included, by the way. Um, Yep. So now guess what? It's fixed. You are able to choose basic or all and all life is so much better. Yeah. And that's the news. There you go. Roll credits. (laughs) (laughs) right can you imagine that like Uh, all right five minutes and 32 (laughs) seconds for this one uh that would be so good (laughs) oh man oh man um but yeah so i mean i think we kind of had our conversation a little bit last week and so then you know before you know when we got into our, our our doth chat here today you came in a little hot you know you came in a little spicy and like a, um, like an old yeah. popped balloon on the street. I don't know. I was trying. There's, it's. I'm reaching for a metaphor that's really not there. <laughs> well, I think the the one thing when we we talk about kind of like state of the game or kind of where things are right now, where we are right now, yeah. I, I really think that you know it's a uh, you know conquest has been a challenge for some people. It, it may be. Yeah super easy for others it may be those individuals that are so extremely smart about figuring out exactly how to do it and all the pieces to it those that got lucky with the right data disks yeah right i mean those that did not yeah that's a huge thing and also too i mean if you spend in the game yeah this this may have been an easier conquest but it's like what what's the expression uh just like you know poop in the punch bowl you know is that the right (laughs) I mean, it I just that's kind of what it feels know, but like that in this. Does feel like this conquest, doesn't it? <laughs> so, I mean, what do you think about Grand Arena right now? That has always been kind of that. Okay, well, all everything else is can not be the great. Yeah, but at least I have Grand Arena. Yeah, yeah, that is. We were kind of talking about that because, like, so that's um, that's what I stream my Twitch channel, the other Sean on Twitch. I stream Wednesday nights. Saturday mornings and Sunday nights because that's when Grand Arena happens, right? It's a 24-hour period, but that's when I can fit it into my life. Yeah. So, like, the raid stressing me out was, like, okay because it's it's a part of the game and my guild wants to push on it and like I want to be good at it, but it stresses me out, and I'm not good at it, and that stresses me out, right? So yeah. whatever, it's a faction of the game. It's a, a trouble spot for me, but I'll I'll work through it. Conquest comes out, and it's like do all these awesome things with three star characters, and you're like, well, I'm not going to do that one, or that one, or that one, or that one, or looks like I'm not getting Ezra. <laughs> whatever, and I had come to terms with that quickly but like before it started i looked at the feats and i was like i'm not gonna get max crate on this and i figured better to admit that now instead of stressing out the last couple days i'm just going after data crowns at this point yeah um <clears throat> but we've always got grand arena mm-hmm. and that's that's the thing that i stream i hardly ever stream raids or anything else it's it's grand arena um and today's stream was so triumphantly unfun yeah i i i can't i'm still processing it was it was earlier today before we recorded um i just can't wrap my head around how unfun it is and that's my that's my line like, we all have lines that are like, all right, well, this is too much. And this is where I have to step in and say, and this is all relative, right? Because we were talking in, in Doth Chat before this, and not everyone feels this way. All right, cool. I'm good. I don't want everyone to feel this way. Um, but I don't know how many times I can say that I hate defense heavy data crowns yeah they're the worst part of this game hands down and there's there's some contenders but 
They are my least favorite thing in the game. Any of these Datacrons that are like, this character starts with damage immunity. Also, uh, an extra 800% health. Also, recovers 700% health after every player takes a turn. Also, your team dies. Also, the rest of your roster has now been vaporized. Also, your phone just blew up and you didn't have insurance. <laughs> also, like... Yeah. I These Datacrons are what is going to kill the game. They are the worst. They're the, a, a game is for fun. It's for leisure. Yeah. They are the absolute opposite of fun. There's nothing fun about that. And maybe some, I'm sure someone's going to listen to it and be like, well, it's fun to come up with ways to beat it. No, it's not. You're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's not how this works. So, Sorry, that just... So it hit me, like, because I, I went up against a Leia that has one of those tank crons from the last set. And in 3v3, can't do it. Slicker used to be able to do it. Remember? Because he had yeah. an offense. A crazy offense cron. And I... So so now I'm looking at it like, well, I don't have that data cron that does that. And it's not it's not even a character one, it's just a tank one. So maybe I could reroll, I don't know. But I'm gonna be facing this for the next couple months now. Yeah. That's a three V three thing that I'm gonna do. I I I hated this round. I have to do it eight more times. And in three V three, I didn't try it because I, I just walked away, but the Rolo thing. I can't, I can't imagine that works in 3v3. That's got to be... You need the full team to do that. You need all those uh, characters pump a turn meter into it. Yeah. Uh, so, I don't know. Datacrons suck. Change my view. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, honestly, I, I, I can't say that I can change the view. I think, you know, typically, I think you and I usually are pretty good about you know, finding the positives with these. And I think a lot of times yeah. we, we could go down a path of, of having that negative mentality. And I know we've had a couple episodes where we're like, man, blah, 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 blah. on the other side of it, like it truly is to the point right now where fun is not the name of the game. It's really like what not. What mode am I having fun in? Yeah. I, you know? It's not territory wars. It's not, don't tell me it's going to be territory wars. <laughs> Cause right, honestly, and, I did some territory war attacks today. We ended up losing the territory war, but I did have fun while doing that. Ugh. Yeah. Am I a territory war guy? Oh, I better not be. <laughs> you better not be. Oh, I, I mean, know. I can't do that. But I, I think it's just, again, when when it was like you press two buttons and you take out one person, you know, and, and it yeah. really was less about um, knowing quantum like physics on, on what these kits do and mm -hmm. and what you have to do and press the right buttons at the right time. I mean, there's still a lot of positives in that. Yeah. Um, and it's fun to beat stuff with it. But I do think that it, it kind of is a challenge. And I think we do need at least one thing. That's going to give us that. Okay. I feel super powerful. Like I'm going to sit down and do this. Cause this is yeah. the fun part of the game. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I just uh. don't know, like when they first did conquest and, and basically Vader was just murdering everything. It felt awesome. I mean, yeah, it really felt like it was, you know, you're collecting these and you're truly getting to use them. And, and I mean, right now I'm, you know, the new, uh, the new challenge that's out there right now. So, when we have <laughs> basically taking Phoenix or Night Sisters in mm -hmm. just Secrets and Shadows is, is a prime example of this. Like it's yeah. it's an assault battle and I'll collect, you know, the mystic uh, level type stuff. But there is nothing yeah. in me that's going to say, OK, I'm going to try to use Night Sisters that will not beat this. Yeah. And I will not go through and like... I, <laughs> It really is like, why? I tried right? it like 40 times today. Oh, geez, <laughs> I did. That's awesome. I, did. I was, uh, while my daughter was at swimming, I was like, you know what? Right before she heads out, I'm going to, I'm going to do a quick hot utils remod. So I did that. And then we go to swimming 
and I'm watching her when she swims, but when she's not, she's in a group. So when she's not swimming, I'm not just going to sit there and look at her. Yeah, right. Like I'm going to, I'm going <laughs> to yeah, play gotta my do game. something else. I get you. Yeah. I tried it so many times. And then my stream, my Twitch stream was so bad. And I, I even said at the start of it, like, I'm not going to get salty today. I'm probably going to lose because there's new data crons and it's three V three. I'm going into it with like the best mindset I can yeah. muster. And I got salty. I was like, I did a <laughs> stupid game. And so I was like, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go play Secrets and Shadows for the rest of my stream. And that's what I did over and over. And everyone left. And it was just like, ah, I don't know. I don't know what to do, man. It's, it yeah. feels bad that uh, so much is like this. And I would love it if this next round of Grand Arena, I go in and like, I find my mojo and it's yeah. just like, Oh, I guess I just had a bad round, but I don't think that's, I don't think that's what we're dealing with, man. I think it's, I think we're, you know, the, the Padme Cron left good riddance, right? Yeah. Right. Um, some other pain in the butt data crowns left, but like, we're, we're still, we're the snake eating its tail, you know, like yeah. it's, it's never, we're never going to have just like two sets that are both in play at the same time that are like, this is just a chill vibe. Yeah. I like this vibe. You know, I don't, I don't, I don't see that. Well, I mean, I, I call it a little bit of the, uh, you know, Bane and slicker blues because I mean, it was <laughs> unbelievably awesome to basically have Bane destroy stuff with his data cron. Yep. You know, and it felt a little bit like, oh, it doesn't matter what I'm doing. I'm going to take it out with Bane. It's going to just work. And then yeah. with Slicker, almost the same thing. Like, I mean, almost everything you're going to beat. And yeah. so I, I think that was kind of the fun piece to it. But when you look at, like, if you have the averages of really crappy crons compared yeah. to that side of it, like, I and I think I might have said this before, but make these crons where they're offense driven. So, yeah. like, Make it to where we truly, if you invest in this, it's going to be easier to beat whatever is in front of you. Not that. And then the whales still invest to get yeah, the right? one because they're still impactful just in a different way. Yeah, I like that. And, and I, I think that just makes a lot more sense to me than uh, us basically going through and getting 600, you know, percent offense up or defense up. Yeah. I mean, like it, in it just kind of looks at that side of it. And I know a lot of people are like, when it comes to this, they're really haven't liked them from the beginning. I've tried to enjoy the good ones in this, but it is a challenge. It it makes it to where the idea of them. And I like a lot of things that they do. It's just like, man, you got to rein in these unkillable things. Like, like it's like they got mad that we were beating uh, Leia with Rolo and they were like, well, yeah, I know. Which actually, it doesn't make sense because we didn't figure that out until after that set came out. So I take that back. That's that's not fair. But I'm still angry. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it, it, again, it's just it's not like everyone that's playing this game and talking about this game has really talked about the fact they don't love data crimes, it feels like. I mean, there's a few, Probably. right, that truly... But I mean, if you had a poll, which again, we've we've had polls before and just in general with this, like what's going to make it to where you enjoy this game more? And again, I mean, I don't know how many people have like, well, start playing this game, start playing this game, you know, and yeah. then they start it and they go, um, <laughs> like you've done this for how many years in a row every <laughs> single day, like every single time. And we're Statler and Waldorf from the Muppet show. Like, know, right? Why do there we keep go. playing this game? <laughs> Well, in five years, you'll have a little bit of fun. Yeah. I mean, that's kind of, no, but well, I mean, again, we don't want to, we're, we're beating that horse at, 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 really at, you know, but we need content, know, Josh, we need content. Good, good. So I uh, actually <laughs> let's, let's transition out of kind of the, yeah. uh, the swoga blues. The, and the clouds have been yelled at enough. Let's, let's <laughs> talk about something else. Well, we thought since we really don't have a lot of, you know, like I said, in the game right now, there's so much happening. Um, but sometimes also, too, without all that stuff happening. What about some of the the weird little things that we think about? You know, just 
I the other day I was talking to my son and he's like, "You really think about that type of stuff?" And I'm like, "Don't oh, you? God, you, you know, me. right?" <laughs> so, so yeah. I guess you're you're kind of get into the brain of, of of Sean and I here. I love this, but, but yeah. So one of the questions I got I got a few questions in here. I thought we'd kind of chat about. And again, it's it could be about making the game better. It could just be about, you know, what would you do now compared to before, right? Nothing crazy. So um, let's do the first one. If you had one character, one character in this game that you would just amp up their power to the point where they're just way better than where they are now, who do you think and what would that be? Mm, there's some contenders. I see what you wrote on here and I'm not going to steal it, but I think it's a good answer <laughs> okay okay uh, um i would say <clears throat> there's a few that come to mind i think some of the new hope cast like farm boy luke like princess yeah. leia um i think they could use definitely a bit of work i honestly i think asajj ventress needs yeah. like there's enough night sisters now to do some interesting things with your night sister comps. Right. And some clearly work better together than others. Like these new ones, Morgan and great mothers, you're going to use them together. Right. Um, but in a lot of these comps, I'll see like Asaj Asaj just gets left out. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, I feel like she's kind of the, introduction to the night sisters in canon like she's she's the night sister character yeah right um i guess morgan elspeth has has quite a quite a character developed as well but not not as much as asajj so i feel like she's just a bit wimpy um and someone else just came to mind oh golly my goldfish brain is not gonna retain this who was it uh nope no it's it's definitely gone Um, (laughs) oh no no uh because of talking about ventress is dooku oh yeah so there was a time where he was top dog in this game because of his leadership ability granting evasion bonuses his constant counterattacks and stuns and that can still be useful in in certain situations but for uh for Sith Eternal Emperor, you had to take him to Relic 8. So a lot of people have high Relic Dooku. Yeah. And he's just like, you just don't use him for anything. You know? He's absolutely left behind. Maybe he goes on a trench team. Cool. Like, a, a supporting character for trench? That's Count Dooku? Right. I don't know, man. That seems kind of weak. What about you? Who you got? I think for me, I, it's funny because I, I keep on looking back on my all my answers here, and they're very similar across the board on this. But Vader for me is, you know, I mean, we had a moment where he was just a beast, and it mm-hmm. felt right. I mean, I think that's where when you just said Dooku, you know, it doesn't feel right to have him as a secondary character when he truly is. I mean, a Sith Lord. Yeah, he's yeah. a Sith Lord, and he reshaped a huge part of with obviously Sidious and all that, but like, he's just such a big part of the story of the history. Sidious is a great answer too. Yeah. He should be a monster. Agreed. Darth Sidious in his prime in the clone wars, when he shows up and fights Maul and Savage. Oh yeah. And that's, that's what that kit is inspired by is that fight. He's terrifying. Like yep. there is no world in which you think, Oh, I think I think they might hold their own here. No. Sidious is terrifying. And again, he was a he was a launch character. And he yeah. was really good when the game first came out, but he could use some adrenaline. A little bit. And, and I think with Vader, it really is when you think about for a lot of people, like if you had a character right off the bat that you're gonna think of first thing for Star Wars, I think a lot of people are gonna say Vader. Yeah. I just even though obviously Luke is big there, but he's so iconic. The mask, the breathing, the right? uh, rest in peace, James Earl Jones as well, just the other day. Right. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I mean, that's, yeah. yeah. But like, and that's why that hurts so bad. 
Yeah, agreed. In, in, in a way, is because like I didn't know James Earl Jones. You didn't know James Earl Jones, but like that's Darth Vader, and yeah. and that's and that sounds like superficial, but it's it's not like we care about this franchise. We care about Star Wars, and so like when Carrie Fisher died, mm-hmm. or when when James Earl Jones ja- died, I, like that stuff hurts, man. That's mm-hmm. a that's an an icon to us. Um, so yeah. Which is just to say, I totally agree. I picked Asajj and Dooku because I needed someone else to talk about. But I think Vader is the number one answer for sure. Yeah. He should be GL level. Agreed. And I just, it should be in general. I mean, I just think that, I also think though with Anakin, that was another one where, again, it's just, it's something to where I know General Kenobi basically you got to have him in, in most of the you know, Galactic Republic teams. Just absolutely mm-hmm. wonderful. With Anakin, yeah, I mean, Qui-Gon helped him out a little bit. But again, this is a main character. Like a, yeah. a main character in this game. That And it, it just seems to me like it's just Vader and Anakin just aren't strong enough. Yeah. There and should so, be a use case for having Obi-Wan, Anakin, and Ahsoka on the same team. Agreed. That should be that should be a thing, you know. And I mean, in Marvel Strike Force, they have where you can actually have, you know, special abilities for people teaming up, like not just like a full yeah, yeah. faction, you know. And I mean, it just seems like in the story, those three could probably take on a whole army. Yeah. But in this game, those three could not take down some of the other teams on this game. I mean, I think that's yeah. where. It's a challenge. They, for they this. certainly couldn't take down GL Leia. <laughs> yeah, right. There's no crap. way. <laughs> so I would say Vader in 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 to me it's a very close Anakin just because again I'm a, I'm yeah. a sucker for for him. But yeah, no, I, yeah. I think those are solid answers. Yeah, well, I think and we've talked. Oh, you know what? No, I'm gonna save this for another for another question. Okay, because it fits better under a different question. So let's move on to the next one, which is similar to what we just said, but it, this is a little different. Like it's, you know, what character would you want to redesign its kit? Not that you really want to change exactly the power level, but um, which one just really that kit doesn't make sense for that character do you yeah. have? And this is where I'll say what I was going to say is uh, Darth Vader should be the galactic legend, not the Anakin who was going through basically uh, puberty, mm-hmm. Sith puberty, if you will, um, turning into this big killer, but ultimately defeated by Obi-Wan. And so it even feels weird that you play as Lord Vader in territory battles because like the the mission, I get it. It's it's iconic. It's Lord Vader versus uh, uh, Obi Wan, and it's just one on one on Mustafar. That's cool, but like, you know, he lost that, right? <laughs> yeah. So like, the galactic legend should be Darth Vader as we see him in A New Hope. Oh that's, yeah, that's that's peak Vader. And I know why it's not, but it should be. So if you could redesign, change up how how these characters fit and how they, they work in the game, that's my number one right there. What about you? Hmm. Who, you who who would you mangle? I, I don't we don't mean to keep this all about Anakin, but for me, <laughs> like it goes back to, to gas. I mean, like it's one of those kit designs that really just still doesn't make any sense. Like there is no mm-hmm. sense to it. Like in what part in the clone wars and what part of anything does he stop moving where he's just going to sit down yeah. and just let other people get so, hurt. Right. This was a Reddit thread where people posed a question like this, like what, whose kit doesn't make sense or something. Yeah. And I commented and it's, I, it might be my most like popular Reddit comment ever. It's one of them. 
Mm. And it, which I'm not super active on Reddit. So don't go look it up and see that there's only like, there's like 200 <laughs> likes or something, but that's, that's big numbers for this guy. Cause I, I, I'm a Reddit lurker, but, yeah. um, but yeah, someone pointed out it is from an episode where he had to do that on the battlefield and he had to wait for like Rex to go complete a mission before he could get up and attack. And I'm like, all right, cool. But that's one episode that is incredibly atypical for his character. Yeah. Makes no sense. Yeah. And it just seems like if, again, it it goes back. I like the file first is, is fun, right? There's certain things I can use it for, you know, but on the other side of it, it just doesn't say who he was in that character. It doesn't feel like the 501st. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, I mean, it's just a scenario where, I mean, I like the fact that you stack the offense. I like that you take away health. I mean, there's nice things to it for another character. And I I think I've heard someone say, like, if this was Mace Windu, you know, or like Mm -hmm. somebody else, it makes more sense to. But, I mean, I just, again, I want to have one of the stronger characters like in the clone wars, he was just absolutely a beast, right? Like, I mean, taking on armies like crazy. And then here he's acting more like a tank and sitting down (laughs) and waiting for other people to die. When his biggest fear, it feels like in, in, in that is just other people dying, you know I mean? Yeah. So it just attachment. Yep. He would never let that happen. Yeah. So that's where I think, again, it goes back to like Vader. It's to me, it's like, I think the kit is great. Um, but it just needs, he needs to be a GL. He needs to be stronger. Like with Anakin, I mean, Anakin's Anakin, right? I mean, I don't mind the Mm -hmm. kit. I actually like the kit. Um, but with gas, it just doesn't make any sense to me. Yeah. None, but agreed. So let's, let's hit this one. Um, if you could get back all your resources and start over, what would be your strategy? This is so daunting. <laughs> it so would be, daunting. it'd be scary. It'd be like, am I going to do this? But yeah, um, yeah exactly. <laughs> it would be to not start. <laughs> I think with me being behind on everything, because just playing the games a few years later than everybody else, Mm-hmm. I think that for me, I'd probably do better in the ship side first because it, when you look at kind of in the grand arena area of Kyber three, Kyber four, Kyber five, um, if you have ships, you're normally going to win. Right. So like yeah. in, in your level, it's like you, most of the people you face have the same type of stuff. The ships and so then it's just aren't the deciding yeah. factor usually. Yeah. Right. But when you have lower on, you know, if, if you have a Leviathan and you just have nothing to beat that, it doesn't yeah. matter what you have for characters. I mean, it's going to go that route. So I think that if everybody was in the same playing field, um, that probably wouldn't be as big a deal. But I do think when you do have all of the right ships in, you know, I, it just makes a lot more sense. And there's That's some ships crystal that, income too. Yeah. Right. You know, and I mean, there's some ships that you have that I just never going to ever get. So I think, when when it comes to me, I'd probably start with with ships in the sense of just making sure I have the the main ships first, yeah. and then I would keep the same path I did. I think um, I actually really enjoyed you know going for legendaries, those pieces to it. I wouldn't change too much, but yeah. I think I would definitely focus a little bit more on ships, making it to where I'm a little bit more competitive. Because I mean, I'm still in the top twenty for my ship shard, and and I don't even have seven star. Um, later on ships right so i mean executor mm-hmm. and profundity are not and i don't have um leviathan so if i can still be top 20 there that means i'm in a wonderful shard so yeah yeah um, really. so yeah so what about for you i mean obviously for you it would be drastically different because from I'm what sure characters you would. had uh i you know <clears throat> i don't know having played it from like pretty close to day one um, I have been around to like really hone what makes sense to do and not, not to say that I'm smart now. Um, but I think I got smart enough at it early enough 
that I've, I followed a pretty good path, you know, essentially uh, drop everything and get galactic legends. Yeah. Drop everything and get capital ships. Um, maybe I would have been a little quicker to, to move on some of those capital ships. Cause I have them all now. It's everything's all hunky dory over here now, but I did lag on, on a couple of those, but so I don't think I'd, I'd change too much. I do recall in the early days, um, spending crystals on stupid things. Like I, I would get chromium packs and I remember like you'd get an update that's like, Hey, princess Leia has been added to chromium packs. And you're like, cause it used to be, I don't even know how you got her before. They didn't have marquees. Mm. It was, or maybe, no, I think she was chromium when it launched. That was the only way to get her in chromium packs. And I remember getting a chromium pack and getting a princess Leia. And I was like, dude, this is so cool. I have Princess Leia. None of my friends do. Wow. And do you know how much that mattered? Not at all. Because I I got her and she unlocked at two stars. The heck am I going to do with that? You know? (laughs) (laughs) Especially now, right? Um, So, I mean, I'm sure there were some like rookie mistakes that I would be able to dodge now knowing a little more about the game. But... Um, but yeah, like, like I said, I think I'm in a spot now where I'm 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 happy with where I've been. I'm sure I would change a couple decisions of Omicrons. <laughs> Those things would would change for sure. But um, other than that, I don't think I've 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 done anything that I look back and and regret to uh, uh, seriously. I mean, you just said Omicrons, and I mean, it's almost like you're doing foreshadowing for the next question. I know. I, I, mean, know. I didn't even mean to, up. but it popped up, and I'm like, there's definitely some changes I would make. <laughs> well, the next question on here that we had was going to be, what's your least favorite and your most favorite Omicron? My least favorite um, is Bausch, mm. because that raid is over. Yeah, I don't regret doing it. It was it it made that raid so much easier. So it's all good. Um, no, my my least favorite is it's got to be one of the three that's on Boba Fett Scion of Jacob. Yeah, <laughs> I really went hard there. I also have uh, two of them, I think, on Grand Inquisitor. Yeah, uh, not the best i guess one of them's probably fine but his leader ability any leader ability for inquisitors that is uh, not reva kind of smarts a little bit little limited use out of that um those are those are those have got to be my my least favorites um most favorite uh, tough to say tough to say i think maybe um I'm I'm looking over some of my top top dogs here, my top agents. And uh maybe Darth Bane. Mm. That's pretty That's nice Oh, one. uh Bo Katan, Mandalore. To get essentially unlock a Galactic Legend Slayer. That's pretty uh pretty satisfying. Um, outside of that, oh no, 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 hands down. Answer is Wampa. <laughs> Wampa's my favorite. Omicron. Answer's Wampa. Yep, no doubt about it. Qui Gon's great. Um, there's there's plenty of contenders, but uh, Wampa is the answer. It's for Grand Arena. It gets you much bigger banners. And yes, in end game, it falls off. But uh, when I do get to use it, I get excited my heart Agreed. rate goes up because it's wampa time baby <laughs> well, what about I, you I, what's, what's I, your most and least faves i get that with a wampa i think it, it just feels good because you just know it's gonna win you can put yeah. it on auto it's just gonna work right yeah um yeah i mean i i think 
if I start with the one I, I like the best, for me, it's still Star Killer. I, I mean, again, oh, the character call. is one of my favorite, but when you go through and it just ramp up, ramps up that team, the fact that Ray is a beast, but we can still, in most cases, still beat you know Ray with Star Killer, and the fact that it really makes him bringing down that. I just love the kit. And I think yeah. that's probably the, the best part. I mean, obviously his other two, I mean, doing a dispel is nice. And obviously like, I, but I mean, making it to where just you ramp up Mara Jade and Palpatine, it, it just, it was nice. And obviously I'm, I'm a sucker for star killer, but oh yeah, for my least favorite, I have talent on here because I couldn't remember what, it, what it even did. I that just was where, I saw it on here, and I literally have it on my other screen because I couldn't remember either. It, and so, I mean, I thought maybe it was really going to ramp, and you know, I, I that was another scenario to where it was really good change. I mean, does it do something? Of course, yeah, but yeah. it doesn't really do much in in the grand scheme of. I like oppress is absolutely wonderful, and but I always use him on defense, and so. I mean, it gets me some holds every now and then. So that's great for 3v3. But with Talons, I don't think it's done anything for me. And yeah. so I would love to have a whoops button and you could just get this back. You know, that would be just outstanding. But yeah. But yeah. I, I mean, I mine on Rose is kind of like that, too. Like I did it for it was a meme. Yeah. That's why I did it. Right. Um, And I've used it a little bit. But, you know, it's not it's not my best work. <laughs> and that's funny. I mean, I don't really regret Bausch that much because I do think that really helped. It, oh, I, yeah, totally. It was worth you, it. I just like if I could have not one anymore. back right now, yeah. I would take that back because it's not going to be worth it to me ever again. But that's where I still again. <laughs> <laughs> gotta think of the roses and the positives here but Uh-oh. i mean it, but it, it's still it'd be nice in those cases where it would go away like what if you did have one where it's for the i mean these raids are going away like flat out they're just not going to be there anymore i know it's right. half the cost but in that moment really you're truly only getting that for a short amount of time and it's a very valuable resource in this game so beautiful as it's yeah. fleeting <laughs> sure, that's a positive way to see it you know it, yeah. it, it just like the gungans wise though with this one here it does it really make it easier for the game 100 percent. but yeah when that next raid comes out you're gonna regret that i mean it's it's like making bad decisions on alcohol or something, right? Like at some yeah. point you're going to look back and be like, mm, I probably shouldn't have danced on the top of that table and did all that crazy stuff that I just did. Right. But you, you broke something you <laughs> yeah, injured right. yourself. You made a fool of yourself. You probably got fired. And yeah. it's so the next time someone tells me like something like horribly crazy that they did and they're uncomfortable with, I'm like, I get it. It's equal to a raid, uh, Omicron mm-hmm. now. It's right in the same level, so yeah. Um, which droid in game would be the best one in real life? Ooh, I'm so glad you asked me this. Um, I think K2SAO would be wonderful. Like I, yeah. I've always, I'm that weird person that thinks about that type of stuff. Because uh, I mean, imagine having that in your house. One to where I don't have to mow the lawn anymore. Right. Oh, well, it depends. I need one that's not has as like brain modified. I I mean, I just oh, need you want someone. an actual like K unit security droid. Oh, there you go. Right. Yeah. Like, yeah, I would love mm. him in general, but I think that having something like that would be just great. Now, at some point soon, and someone's gonna be listening to this like thirty years from now and be like, uh, "We have them. Like, this is not new, but it's still." Like, oh, you guys didn't have lawnmower droids. <laughs> I know, right? Oh. Oh. oh, speaking of lawnmower droids, did you see the the remote controlled lawnmower that can go 60 miles an hour and it's done <laughs> by like a remote control? Man, I was like, oh, no, I don't that, like that at all. <laughs> that was get out there and mow your lawn. Quit. No, <laughs> I'm unacceptable. Just like, I'm just waiting for the news to find when someone actually runs someone over with it, you know, but yeah. 
Because it looks like a death machine. This is this is. I I assume that was invented here in the states. Oh, probably. Yeah, yeah. Because it's so quintessentially American to to do that. Like they talk about blue zones where people live longer and like the diets they eat, like the Mediterranean diet or like a lot of Asian, like uh, Okinawa, I believe is, is a blue zone where like the fish gives them a lot of omega threes and health and blah, blah, blah. But another thing that's always built into those blue zones is that like, they don't do things to make your life more and more and more sedentary. Like, when people now, a lot of people put washing machines on the main floor. I get it. It's quicker. But like every time I go downstairs to do laundry, I'm like blue zone, blue zone, blue zone. <laughs> <laughs> so like I, it, w- we make things easier and I get why we do because they're not the fun things. But like low mowing your lawn now is remote control and it just like it feels like idiocracy (laughs) but i still want it i mean i'm just saying i mean (laughs) well yeah obviously but maybe maybe i can i can put my uh, treadmill outside and i'll walk on the treadmill as i'm (laughs) using the remote control right just blasting that carbon footprint (laughs) you know (laughs) i love it (laughs) So how about for you? If you had a droid that you could have, man, I don't know. I think uh, I think a case could be made for R two D two, because he's a pretty good guy. He's useful. Yeah, kind of handy in a fight, to be honest. True, uh, but he's not quite so. Uh, he's got a little attitude, but he he wouldn't be as much of a pain as Chopper, mm. right? And BB eight. Let's be real. He's a ball. He's gonna. Fall apart every time he rolls downstairs. I know, right? He can't go on carpet. I'm just R2 saying. R2 can't really go downstairs. You know what? You know what? Maybe BD1 mm. from the Jedi yeah. video game series. I might go I mean, with BD1. I, I would love it. I mean, that would be pretty cool to have just in general. Yeah. I mean, of course, it depends on what you're really using it for. and But I think that one just be fun companion. Yeah, and for the heels. Man. I know, right? We uh, <laughs> can't can't knock the heels. We better not get an off brand. It's like <laughs> like <laughs> giving us caffeine and like just a, a right, full dose yeah. of something. The homeopathic <laughs> uh, heel droid. <laughs> Rub some dirt in it. I mean, my luck could be one of those things where just like with the old uh, toys, like had the uh, only one type of. Uh, like bullet in them and then you lose those bullets you just never can use it again that's we had uh we had a birthday party at our house last week for for my son and they had a nerf battle and this kid from the neighborhood brought over his nerf gun that we bought for his birthday we got it for him we didn't realize it's nerf it's not off brand yeah but it uses a different kind of dart than every other nerf gun and so like we've got refill stations set up and like everyone's running around the yard picking up ammo and cramming it in their gun and you know and he can't do that and we're like dude oh man that's the one we got you (laughs) oh i'm sorry yeah it's funny no fun there but yeah i mean yeah well i mean i hope that with this again there's not a crazy lot of stuff that was happening in the game but the fun part yeah. is, is even if there's not something crazy happening, this is the stuff that I think Josh, about and we think Josh about. Said, well, like, we're talking about this, then. <laughs> yeah, right. You know, but I mean, I, love right? it. I mean, it's fun. All right. Um, well, that's, uh, you know, we said we were just going to be whining through the whole episode, griping about our conquest, <laughs> which I guess we'll do that next week. But yeah. Um, no, we'll be griping about territory battle next week. Uh, no, I I feel like that turned into a a really good time, and that's what I needed after that terrible stream where I just lost, and then I lost again, and I just said, you know what, I hate this, I hate everything. Um, so before we head out, let's hear it. Who are you grinding? 
Man, I am officially ready for Jar Jar because my, my last one that was left was Boomadir. He was at Gear 12 the last we spoke, and now he is at Relic 5. And that means all four of these fancy-looking Gungans are are at that Relic 5. And so, what, two months, probably? And maybe I'll get Jar Jar. I mean, that's about every three, was it three months or so? Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, that feels pretty good. Um, I'll tell you right now... uh, I just am not a fan of scrap right now. Like it is, oh, man. I, I'm in, I'm in mode where it is desperate at this point. Um, yeah. But still, all set there. Uh, Twelve relic five. Now here's the thing: is I don't have a lot else going on in my Ahsoka front. I am actually basically waiting to do any type of. I'm getting a lot of signal data, getting ready to get Ahsoka up to relic nine. Um, that's gonna feel a little bit weird. I mean, snips. I know it's going to help the ship a little bit and then it's going to help her, but I don't think it's going to change the game in any way, but it'll be nice to get that done. Yeah. Now the only one of the, the other group of the, the troopers that are actually farmable is night trooper. So he went from 25 out of 30 up to 31 out of 65. And now he's all the way up to gear 11 plus. So I'm working on the other two basically. So it's just, you know, our lovely Cairo that's basically what this game is, just uh, Cairo hunting and scrap hunting and that moving is, from there. That is the name of the game, yeah. But yeah, so then um, really the other two are still still at gear 10. I mean, Gas is only uh, going to be, he's actually relic 7 for me. I got to get him up to 8, so not too much. Ezra, Ezra's only relic 3, and Ventress is relic 3. So those are going to be pretty easy when I get those going, but... I think Ahsoka get that up to Relic 9 because I feel like if something happens, more stuff with it, I, those are easier. But I just want to get rid of the hard stuff first. Yeah. Now, I mean, one thing I did put in there that was kind of different, I put Stap in there. He's only, um, he was three stars. And so I'm just kind of working that first uh, Cantina. I will go through and do that one. So that's yeah. all I'm doing. I'm just going to slowly grind him up to that. I, I really like my grievous team to be better and staff will do that. So really doing that as a whole. So that's really the only changes. I went a couple relic levels. Um, I need some wins. I'm telling you, but mm-hmm. it feels good though. Whenever Jar Jar comes back, I'll uh, have my Jar Jar. Of course. Now Zeta's all of like, I'm basically right now. I'm not sure which one I exactly I did, but all of the Gungans are getting their are those Zetas. And so sure. I'm a little bit behind on those. And I actually realized today I have 6,000 for fleet. So I'm like, man, I've been forgetting to grab those in the morning. So I need to get rid of that stuff too. Hmm. Um, Datacrons, I had to get Master Qui-Gon just because I wanted to. And it's not great. But guess what? Datacrons, I have it. Now, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the other one that I, I really focused on was Eeth Koth. I, I just, it's too good of a, a cron. You got to have it. Um, yeah. And honestly, it's really helping in uh, arena already. I mean, I'm moving up relatively pretty easy. So, and so far, I did actually go against a uh, Leia and it beat it. So, we'll take that as a win. So, hopefully, that's yeah. going to be kind of the piece. But so, yeah, that was. Uh, it's weird because last time I think I had like four weeks in there, so it felt like really great. This week I'm like, oh. yeah, I promise I played I just the game. Did a regular amount of stuff. I know, yes. right? So, I need to live vicariously through you with all of the upgrades because I mine just wasn't enough. So, mm. who are you grinding? Yeah, well, it's a it's a it's a real week of just pushing the numbers a little <laughs> higher. So, uh, Night Trooper went from twenty one up to forty seven out of sixty five. Death Trooper Peridia, Captain Enoch, nothing happening there yet. <laughs> Um, great mothers we got, mm. right? Uh, oh, Morgan Elspeth. Um, I don't think I recorded where she was, but I had a little crystal surplus and I bought a couple gamble packs and nice. I got her up to four stars. So she is now 10 out of 65. And I thought, you know, with conquest, that would be smart. Didn't matter. Like, yeah. repeats are still things that. I'm unable or unwilling to do. So, um, 
Naboo stuff, though. I made some moves there. I Last week, I had just gotten Ayla to Relic 5. And in the raid, that was pretty cool. I liked yeah, that. Right? Now I also have moved Mace from Relic 3 up to Relic 5. Uh, also, in the last raid, I did that before the end of that last raid. So uh, that's cool. I mean, it's not a huge deal, but... Now everyone I use on those teams is Relic 5, so I don't have to like put all the Relic 3s together and have suboptimal teams or anything. I can I can put together some decent teams. Yeah. Which is cool. I'm I'm able to get 1.2 million with all of my teams except for uh my separatists. I can't quite do that with yet. But <clears throat> Stap is Relic 3. I don't know if I'm gonna do it. I was going to push him up and like have the whole separatist B2 lead team, but I can use Newt Gunray and I'm probably just gonna use Newt Gunray, you know, like there's so many other things in a perfect world. I would use Stap, but I don't, I don't think that's actually going to happen. Also in preparation for this uh, conquest, I took Acolyte, Night Sister Acolyte from Relic 1 up to Relic 3. Mom. And Talia is gear 12, just about to hit gear 13. I'll take her to Relic 3 as well. Um, not that I need her instantly, but I think she makes a pretty good fifth on that uh, Great Mother's team. So mm-hmm. let's be ready for it. Um, uh, oh, one other. Yeah, of course. So I think last week I had already moved Padawan Obi-Wan from Relic 7 to Relic 8. So mm-hmm. I did that with Master Qui-Gon as well. And I can't remember with um, uh, Duel of the Fates, is there a Relic 8 tier or does it just go straight to 9 from 7? Ooh, that's a good question. I do not remember that. I mean, either I, way, I'm pushing them both to 9. But uh, I was thinking of that earlier. I was like, I might I might get something. Because that comes back. Uh, I don't know. By the time it comes back, I, I might have them both at Relic 9 anyways. So big deal um datacrons let's see uh omicrons i didn't do any zetas i did um death trooper peridia so that whole kind of weird new trooper team Mm -hmm. new remnant guys i'll have all their zetas now and then for datacrons i only have two to relic nine or to level nine i have moff gideon and eth koth Oh, okay. I just rolled a um, Qui-Gon when we were on our Doth chat, and I, I re-rolled it and took East Cost because, yeah. Nice. Pretty good. Uh, besides that, I, I have like eight of them or so. Yeah. But I'm I'm settling for Gold Crate and just going after Datacrons because I don't want to be behind on Datacrons again. This... This 3v3 where you need 15 teams, so like 30 Datacrons, I kind of struggled a little bit. The Datacrons wouldn't have helped that much (laughs) for this, but um, I don't know. We live, we learn, we stock up. There you go. Is that, God, that's kitschy. I don't know about that. (laughs) That's all we got for you this week. It may not be the best advice, but at least we didn't recommend you uh, just settle for a Qui-Gon. Get you some ETH cough. Mm. If you want to continue the conversation, join our Discord server. It's linked in the show description. Become a real live Jawa by supporting us on Patreon and share your thoughts by leaving us a podcast review. Big thanks also go out to Pabu Appa and SWGOH.GG and SWGOHEvents.com for providing all the hard data we misinterpret weekly. Thanks for tuning in, and may the Force and RNG be with you.